Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the year 2020 marks the 75th anniversary of the dropping of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Ever since then, the victims of the bombing and the suffering of the survivors have been reminding us of the horrible and unacceptable consequences of the use of nuclear weapons. On behalf of the Republic of Austria, I wish to express my solidarity with the victims and their descendants. The international community and civil society alike have an obligation to remain aware of the threat posed by nuclear weapons. Their number is still exceeding 10,000 warheads, each of them constituting a risk and a threat rather than a contribution to security. And still today, new nuclear weapons are developed and deployed. Austria has been advocating nuclear disarmament throughout the past decades. Recently adopted instruments to advance disarmament and non-proliferation have gained wide support of the international community. The adoption of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons at the United Nations in 2017 clearly demonstrates the desire to overcome the era of nuclear weapons. Let us seize the opportunity of this dynamic to work together to achieve nuclear disarmament. I would like to express my thanks to the city of Hiroshima and Japan for this commemoration today, keeping the international community aware of this deadly threat is an invaluable contribution to the goal of a world without nuclear weapons, of a peaceful world. Finally, on a personal note, I recall with gratitude my journey to Japan in October 2019, when I had the privilege to attend the enthronement of Emperor Naruhito. Allow me to take this opportunity to convey to the Japanese leadership and people my greetings and best wishes. Ladies and gentlemen, Minosama. In commemoration of the bombing of Hiroshima, I want to express my deepest condolences to those who lost their loved ones and to all of you who are still suffering from the atomic bombings. I thank the survivors, the Hibakusha, for your tireless efforts in passing on the message to future generations. Nuclear weapons must never be used again. Recent uh, international developments give reason for us to be worried. In the past, even during times of great tension and quarrel, nuclear weapons states were able to agree on limitations and control of their arsenals. Today, existing agreements are challenged and new agreements are painstakingly difficult to negotiate. The arms control architecture is under threat. We need to reverse this trend and cooperate to advance nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. It is our common responsibility to work towards a world free of weapons of mass destruction. It is our duty to build a better future for humankind. The Hiroshima Peace Memorial Day is a reminder for all of us of the importance of lasting peace. No one on this planet should ever have to endure the kind of devastation and pain that the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki suffered 75 years ago. We must never forget. Wer einmal in Hiroshima stand, dem gehen die Bilder nicht mehr aus dem Kopf. Die skelettierten Häuser, davor die große, leere Fläche, über der die Bombe detonierte. 
Wer einmal in Hiroshima stand, der hat in den Abgrund geblickt, das Ende der menschlichen Zivilisation vor Augen. Die Welt darf nie vergessen, was in Hiroshima und wenige Tage später in Nagasaki geschehen ist und weshalb. Strahlung, Tod, Krankheit, Elend, all das waren die Folgen eines von Nationalismus und Militarismus angefachten Krieges, entfesselt von Deutschland und Japan. Erst der Blick in den Abgrund ließ die Menschheit nach dem Krieg Wege finden, um ihre Selbstauslöschung durch Nuklearwaffen zu verhindern. Und umso größer ist meine Sorge, wenn die damals eingegangenen Verpflichtungen heute durch kurzsichtige und verantwortungslose Machtpolitik in Gefahr geraten. Die nukleare Abrüstung stagniert. Neue Technologien lassen gefährliche Ungleichgewichte entstehen. Und der Griff nach Atomwaffen durch ein Land wie Nordkorea fordert die ganze Weltgemeinschaft heraus. Heute, 75 Jahre nach der Katastrophe, muss von Hiroshima deshalb ein neuer Impuls ausgehen für Rüstungskontrolle und nukleare Abrüstung. Daran arbeiten Japan und Deutschland gemeinsam mit vielen anderen Ländern. Als Teil der sogenannten Stockholm-Initiative und der Initiative für Nichtverbreitung und Abrüstung rufen wir alle Staaten eindringlich dazu auf, ihre Verpflichtungen aus dem Atomwaffensperrvertrag einzuhalten. Auch setzen wir uns dafür ein, dass der Teststoppvertrag so schnell wie möglich in Kraft tritt. Vor allem aber appellieren wir an die Nuklearmächte, ihrer besonderen Verantwortung für Abrüstung und Rüstungskontrolle gerecht zu werden. Hiroshima steht für den Wahnsinn des Atomkrieges und das unfassbare Leid seiner Opfer. Mit einigen Überlebenden konnte ich bei meinem Besuch im November letzten Jahres sprechen. Wir schulden ihnen unseren vollen Einsatz für eine friedlichere Welt. Eine Welt ohne Atomwaffen. This morning, 75 years ago, an atomic bomb was dropped for the first time in the history of humanity on Hiroshima. August 6, 45, stands out as one of the darkest days of a world war full of atrocities and sufferings. That day was preceded by several years of war and countless massacres and killings. By the time the war finished, over 50 million civilians and soldiers had died, and numerous cities had been destroyed. Today is a day to remember that war will always bring havoc and destruction and can never be solution or means to realize one's aims. The Second World War brought about the realization in Europe, as elsewhere, that peaceful means and cooperation are the only way to bring about lasting solutions to conflicts and disputes. In wars, everybody ends up losing. But through peace and negotiation, we can all emerge as winners. The years following the end of World War II brought about the creation of the United Nations and on the European continent of the European coal and steel community. My country, Luxembourg, has known peace for past 75 years. Peace, cooperation and solidarity are the biggest achievements of the European project for which the European Union was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2012. I hope that the two world wars with their unspeakable horrors will serve as a constant reminder of the need for diplomacy, negotiation and multilateral forums to find mutually acceptable solutions. I hope that days like today will strengthen our resolve to always, I repeat always, do our utmost to avoid war and to strive for peaceful settlement of any disputes that may arise. May such horrible events as happened 75 years ago, here and elsewhere, never repeat themselves. May we always strive for peace everywhere. Thank you.
Dear Mayor, citizens of Hiroshima and Excellencies, today we commemorate all those who lost their lives or their health when a nuclear bomb exploded ab above Hiroshima 75 years ago. Please let me express my deepest sympathies to the victims and their families. I have met with Hiba Kusha from Hiroshima and their strong testimonies made a deep impression on me. As the years have passed, fewer of those who experienced the bombing are still with us. I'm glad that so much is being done to keep these eyewitnesses' accounts alive also for future generations. This is very important. I commend Japan and the city of Hiroshima for the long-standing engagement for peace. I'm also happy to see that so many students and young people in Hiroshima and all over the world engage in this issue. By bearing witness and by mobilizing citizens, students, civil society and political leaders, you play an important role in ensuring that such a tragedy will never happen again. The fate of the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki have taught us that any use of nuclear weapons will have a catastrophic humanitarian consequences. Norway shares the goal of a world free of nuclear weapons. To reach this goal, we need to continue global commitment to the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. We also need willingness to build trust. This requires joint efforts and clear political engagement on the part of nuclear and non-nuclear weapon states alike. Together with Japan and many other countries, Norway continues to work on disarmament. In particular, Norway has taken on a leadership position on verification of disarmament. In the years ahead, we will depend on new generations to carry out the work to achieve our shared goal of a world without nuclear weapons, even though the task is daunting. I wish all of you success in this important work. Dear Mr. Mayor and the people of Hiroshima, dear organizers, attenders and guests of the memorial ceremony, this year is marked by the 75th anniversary of the end of the most large-scale and the bloodiest war in the history of mankind. Therefore, we address not only its results, which enabled people's transition to the principles of peaceful life and formed the basis of the modern system of international relations, but also remember the human cost in order to prevent a recurrence of the tragedies of that time. On August 6, 1945, the United States launched a nuclear attack against Hiroshima and three days later against Nagasaki. To this day, the terrible death of innocent civilians strikes a chord with millions of people on our planet. Even with a clear idea of the reasons behind and course of World War II, it is hard to fully understand what the masterminds and perpetrators of such an inhuman act were guided by. Soviet representatives were among the first foreign observers to visit, to visit the site of the tragedy and collect detailed materials that were submitted to the leadership of the country. This and other information on the results of the study into the consequences of nuclear explosions in Japan was subsequently made public and presented to the wider international community. We would expect others to follow suit, showing respect to historical truth and ensuring transparency with regard to those events. An impartial analysis of what happened in August 1945 confirms that the world's leading capitals could not but realize that the World War II was really coming to an end. The Soviet offensive in the Far East, as part of the agreements between the Allies, not only liberated China and Korea, but also took away Japan's motivation to continue military operations. In that situation, atomic bombings by the United States were in fact a show of force and an operational test of nuclear weapons on civilians. 
the United States was the first and only country to use this type of weapons of mass destruction. As a nuclear weapon state, Russia recognizes its responsibility for international security and global and regional stability. We are aware of the impact that the use of nuclear weapons may have. Our country pursues a policy of peacekeeping and non-confrontation in international affairs. Today, we note with great concern the degradation of the international arms control system, denunciation of treaties, disregard of the principles of undiminished security of states, and a significant increase in nuclear risks. There has been an alarming shift in doctrinal military and political policies towards the idea that it is acceptable to employ nuclear weapons as a means of warfare. We need to eliminate the risk of military confrontation between the nuclear powers and rule out the possibility of a nuclear war. We firmly believe that such a war cannot be won and must never be unleashed. We suggest that all nuclear powers officially confirm their commitment to this tenet. In a bid to free the world from the threat posed by weapons of mass destruction, we reaffirm our commitments under the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons and, in this connection, call for extension of the START Treaty. In the face of the dismantlement of the INF Treaty by the United States, Russia unilaterally undertook not to deploy ground-launched intermediate-range and shorter-range missiles in any given region of the world until relevant US-made weapons are deployed there. Russia has unwaveringly supported constructive dialogue with all political forces and public movements advocating the nuclear threat reduction. In this context, it is crucially important to hold a substantive discussion on the issues that have to be dealt with in order to create favorable conditions for further movement towards nuclear disarmament. These issues include the deployment of a global missile defense system by the United States, development of high-precision non-nuclear strategic offensive arms, weaponization of outer space and cyberspace, and the United States' refusal to ratify the CTBT. We must join our efforts to ensure that the terror and pain of Hiroshima and Nagasaki will never repeat. The tragedy left a deep imprint on the hearts of the Russian people, finding its way into our literature, arts and music. Every Russian schoolchild knows the story of a girl named Sadako, who, hoping to be cured from radiation sickness, was trying to make a thousand paper cranes. That is why, on August 6, our thoughts will be with the people of your city. Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, Sergei Lavrov. Dear Hiroshima citizens and Hibakusha survivors, today we mark the Peace Memorial Day. This day reminds us that the humankind should never again experience the horrors of atomic power. My thoughts belong to innocent victims of the atomic bombing of August 6, 1945. My deepest condolences to their families and sympathies to the survivors. Since the Second World War, we began to build our world back together based on peace and cooperation. It is our duty to protect and strengthen these values for future generations. Today, we need true globalization of compassion and solidarity. The Peace Memorial Day sends to the world a strong message calling for lasting peace. It also reminds us that our world is still not free from nuclear weapons. We agree that nuclear energy should only be used for peaceful purposes. I commend Japan for its leadership in these matters. Many years personally represented also by the former Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Yukoya Amana. He embodied Japan's commitment for a safer world and the peaceful use of nuclear energy to the benefit of all humanity. Dear Hiroshima citizens, dear Hibakusha survivors, dear people of Japan, Slovakia stands with you on this day. I am sending you heartfelt wishes of long-lasting peace and harmonious prosperity in the new era of Reva.
Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, Hiroshima. Hiroshima is the embodiment of everything that is wrong with the war. Both Hiroshima and Nagasaki are a symbol of its dark nature. Hiroshima and Nagasaki mark the end of one of the most atrocious periods in human history, World War II. With it, humanity was defeated. The world lost its moral compass. They show that the advancement of science does not necessarily mean the advancement of humankind. It can also lead us to our downfall. The use of science to the benefit of peace or of war, it's a human, political decision. But first and foremost, Hiroshima and Nagasaki remind us of our duty to peacefully resolve our disputes and always, always endeavor to improve relations between people, nations and states. The world is closely connected. A threat to one part of the world, be that an arms race or pandemic, can quickly become a threat to all of the world. We need to work together even more closely and invest shared, genuine efforts to strengthen our mutual trust and cooperation. Today's anniversary should remind and caution us about where a world of conflict and hatred can lead. It is easy to make enemies and hard to build friendships, and even harder to forgive. Although learning from the past is probably the hardest of all, we cannot change history, but we can change the future. On behalf of the Republic of Slovenia, I would like to express my appreciation for all those who work tirelessly to preserve the memory of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And I would like to express my deepest respect for the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and their families. Seventy-five years ago, on August 6, 1945, the world changed. Hibakusha described how everything turned into one sharp white light. Yasuriju Tanaka, who was three at the time, says it was like a million camera flashes going off at once, then pitch darkness. Darkness, lasting darkness for humankind. The atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki took the lives of more than 150,000 people in just a few days. And the long-term effects of radiation continued to cause casualties and suffering for decades. Confronted with the undeniable horrors and humanitarian consequences of the very first use of a nuclear weapon, world leaders came together in 1968 and ratified the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. The continued relevance of the treaty has never been clearer. We must push further and advance nuclear disarmament. We owe it to the victims and survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We need to achieve progress in our common goal, a world without nuclear weapons. Sweden has a long tradition of working to advance nuclear disarmament. Let there be no doubt that Sweden's goal, which we share with so many others, is a world free from nuclear weapons. Hiroshima, the name of your city, must be etched in our collective memories with the same intensity as the scars etched in the skin and minds of the countless victims and survivors of the nuclear bombings. It is our moral and human responsibility to never give up our efforts for nuclear disarmament.
That is how we honor the victims and Hibakusha of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and how we act on our conviction that no one should ever suffer as they did. Sayın Başbakan, kıymetli misafirler, sizleri şahsım ve milletim adına en kalbi duygularımla saygıyla selamlıyorum. Bugün insanlık tarihinin en karanlık günlerinden birini, Hiroşima'ya atom bombası atılmasının 75. yıl dönümünü büyük bir hüzün ve acıyla yad ediyoruz. Bu felaketin kurbanlarını bir kez daha tazimle anıyorum. Dost Japon halkına tam 75 senedir yüreklerindeki acıyı dindirmeye çalışan mağdurların yakınlarına başsağlığı diliyorum. İnsanlık olarak Hiroşima'da yaşanan bu meşrum olaydan ders almayı başarmak zorundayız. Barış Anıtı Parkı'nda yer alan kaideye kazındığı gibi Hiroşima yanlışı tekrar etmeme kararlılığımızın nişanesi olmalıdır. Bir şairimiz bunu Hiroşima kurbanlarının sembolü haline gelen Sadako Sasaki'nin anısına yazdığı şiirinde böyle anlatıyor. Kapıları çalan benim kapıları birer birer. Gözünüze görünemem, göze görünmez ölüler. Hiroşima'da öleli Oluyor bir on yıl kadar. Yedi yaşında bir kızım, büyümez ölü çocuklar. Saçlarım tutuştu önce, gözlerim yandı kavruldu. Bir avuç kül oluverdim, külüm havaya savruldu. Benim sizden kendim için hiçbir şey istediğim yok. Şeker bile yiyemez ki, kağıt gibi yanan çocuk. Çalıyorum kapınızı. Teyze, amca bir imza ver. Çocuklar öldürülmesin. Şeker de yiyebilsinler. Ancak Hiroşima'da yaşanan onca drama rağmen Suriye'den Yemen'e, Filistin'e kadar birçok ülkede çocuklar ölmeye, minik bedenleriyle savaşın tüm yükünü çekmeye devam ediyor. Ölüm Çocukları kimi zaman bir mülteci teknesinde, kimi zaman okul sırasında, kimi zaman sokakta, kimi zaman da kendilerini en güvende hissettikleri yer olan annelerinin kucağında buluyor. Dünyanın hala nükleer silahların gölgesinde olduğu günümüzde Hiroşima'dan yükselen çığlığa kulak vermemiz gerekiyor. İnsanlığın 8 Ağustos 1945'te yaşadığı bu utanç verici acıyı bir daha yaşamaması için çocuklarımıza ve gelecek nesillere insanlık onuruna yaraşır bir dünya inşa edebilmek için bir daha asla diyerek sözlerime son vermek istiyorum. Tüm Hiroşimalıları, tüm Japon halkını ve törende bulunan tüm katılımcıları tekrar Saygıyla selamlıyorum. Kalın sağlıcakla. Warm greetings and deepest aloha to Miramatsui and the people of Hiroshima. You know, this August marks the 75th anniversary of the dropping of the first atomic bomb on any city in the world. And as we mark this tragedy and still reflect on the sorrow that is caused to the people of Hiroshima, we also focus on hope and how do we move forward in a world that becomes free of war and free of nuclear weapons. That's all our hope here in Honolulu, your sister city. And we're with you on this very important anniversary. Mahalo and aloha. Bonjour. Aujourd'hui, je suis en compagnie du Consul général du Japon à Montréal, M. Osamu Azawa, 
afin de commémorer les 75 ans de la première bombe atomique tombée sur Hiroshima le 6 août 1945. Comme vous le savez peut-être, Montréal et Hiroshima sont villes jumelles. Traditionnellement, chaque été, nous faisons résonner pour l'occasion la cloche de la paix au Jardin japonais du Jardin botanique de Montréal. Toutefois, comme ça ne sera pas possible cette année, nous tenions à prendre un moment afin de vous livrer un message à distance, un message pour la paix et contre les armes nucléaires. En 2018, j'ai eu la chance de visiter la ville d'Hiroshima. Son musée et son parc de la paix, désigné site patrimoine mondial UNESCO. Cette visite m'a beaucoup touchée et m'a rappelé l'importance de poser des gestes concrets pour la paix. En plus d'aspirer à un monde sans armes nucléaires, nous devons bâtir ensemble des villes plus résilientes, plus durables et plus inclusives, où il fait bon vivre pour chaque citoyenne et chaque citoyen. Sur ce, je cède la parole au Consul général. Merci, Madame la mairesse Plante, chers Montréalais et Montréalais, Hiroshima Shimin no Minasama, konnichiwa, eh, Nihon Kokuso Ryoji no Izawa desu. Il y a 75 ans, en un instant, plus de 100 000 personnes ont perdu la vie à la suite de la détonation d'une seule bombe atomique, détruisant la ville Hiroshima tout entière. Il est de notre responsabilité collective de ne jamais, jamais plus répéter ce qui s'est passé il y a 75 ans sur cette planète. Le Japon poursuivra ses efforts pour instaurer un monde sans armes nucléaires. Je tiens à remercier les Montréalais et Montréalais qui, chaque année, le 5 août, se recueillent devant la cloche de paix dans un, dans un geste d'appui à la paix dans le monde.広島の皆様からモントリオール、モントリオール市民へ送られた平和の鐘は毎年8月6日に開催される alors que le monde entier se réunit pour faire face à la pandémie de la COVID-19, le Japon est toujours à vos côtés dans cette lutte. En tant que représentant du peuple japonais, je forme mes yeux sincères à que l'humanité tout entière puisse vivre en paix et en santé dans un monde sans armes nucléaires. Je vous remercie. Chers collègues, chère mère Matsui, mère d'Hiroshima, à titre de mairesse de Montréal, de citoyenne d'honneur de la ville d'Hiroshima et de membre exécutif de Mayors for Peace, c'est un honneur pour moi de livrer notre message de paix à la population montréalaise en solidarité avec la population d'Hiroshima et du Japon. Nous sommes à vos côtés. Let us work together so that there is no more Hiroshima, no more Nagasaki. Plus jamais Hiroshima, plus jamais Nagasaki.